In this video, we are going to review how to find the volume of a solid using cross-sections. So there's two formulas that you need to be aware of. The volume can be found using this equation. It's the integration from a to b of the area function. And if it's in terms of x, then the cross-sections has to be perpendicular to the x-axis. You can also use this equation where c and d are y values. If it's in terms of y, then the cross-sections has to be perpendicular to the y-axis. So for this problem, the cross-sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're going to use this formula. Now let's go ahead and draw a graph. So y is equal to the square root of x and it's bounded by the x-axis and the line x equals 4. Now if we draw a square, the cross-sections are squares. The area of a square is basically side squared. And s is perpendicular to the x-axis. s represents the base of the cross-section. So notice that S is the same as Y. So the area, which is S squared, is also equal to Y squared. And Y is the square root of X. Our goal is to get the area function in terms of X. So A of X is equal to X. So if we integrate it from A to B, this will give us the volume. So we're going to integrate it from 0 to 4. And a of x is simply x. The antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2, evaluated from 0 to 4. So first, let's plug in 4. And then we will plug in 0. 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that is the answer. Now, another way in which you can graph this particular problem is you can draw it like this. If you want to see uh, why we set it up the way we did. So this is the graph y equals square root x. And we said this, that line, is basically s. It represents the base of the square. And let's draw the square. So there is a square. You can draw it that way too. And so this is s as well. And so you can see that the area is s squared. And you can also see that y is equal to s. So you can graph it that way. It may help you to visualize it better. Number two, find the volume of the solid bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and the line y equals 4 minus x over 2 using cross sections of semicircles that are perpendicular to the x-axis. So if the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, ultimately, we need to use this equation to find the volume. So we got to find the area of the cross section in terms of x. But now let's go ahead and graph the equation. So we have a line, which is 4 minus x over 2. We could rewrite it as negative 1 over 2x plus 4. So now it's in a slope-intercept form. So the slope is negative 1 half, and the y-intercept is 4. So we could graph it at the point 0, 4. And if the slope is negative, it's a decreasing function. Now let's find the x-intercept. To do that, replace y with 0 and solve. So we can multiply both sides by 2. Negative half times 2 is negative 1. So this is going to be negative x. 4 times 2 is 8. So if we add x to both sides, we can see that x is equal to 8. So the x-intercept is 8 and the y-intercept is 4. 
Now the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So that means S is parallel to the y-axis. So this is S. Now we can graph the function another way too. Let's say that's the x-axis, this is the y-axis. And the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, which means they're parallel to the y-axis and they're, they're basically a semicircle. So that's the graph and this is S. So as you can see, S represents the diameter of the semicircle. Now we know that the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. And so the radius is half of s. So s is equal to 2r and 1 half of s is equal to r. So let's replace r with s divided by 2. So the area is 1 half pi times 1 half s squared. 1 half squared is basically 1 fourth. If you do 1 over 2 times 1 over 2, you get 1 over 4. So this is 1 over 4 s squared. So therefore the area is 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So it's 1 over 8 pi s squared. And if you look at the graph, we can see that s is the same as y. So s equals y. So the area in terms of y is 1 over 8 pi y squared. Now let's get rid of a few things. Let's make some space. So at this point, we can replace y with 4 minus x over 2. Or let's just use, let's use that. So the area is going to be 1 over 8 pi times 4 minus 1 half x squared. So now we have the area function in terms of x, which means we can now use this equation to calculate the volume. So the graph was bounded between 0 and 8. So a is 0, b is 8. And then we can integrate the area function at this point. And let's not forget dx. Now before we find the integration of that function, we need to FOIL 4 minus 1 half x squared. So that's 4 minus 1 half x times itself. So 4 times 4, that's equal to 16. And then we have 4 times 1 half x which is negative 2x, and negative half x times 4 is also negative 2x, and then negative 1 half x times negative 1 half x, that's positive 1 fourth x squared. So this becomes 1 fourth x squared minus 4x plus 16, if we combine the middle terms. So therefore, the volume is the integration from 0 to 8, 1 over 8 pi 1 fourth x squared minus 4x plus 16 dx. So now let's take the constant and move it to the front. So the volume is 1 eighth pi integration from 0 to 8 1 over 4x squared minus 4x plus 16 in parentheses with a dx out in the front. So now let's find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 fourth x squared, that's 1 fourth x to the third divided by 3. The antiderivative of 4x is going to be 4x squared divided by 2. And for 16, it's going to turn into 16x evaluated from 0 to 8. And we still have 1 eighth pi in front. So let's plug in 8. So 4 times 3 is 12. So that's 1 over 12 
times 8 to the third power. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we have 8 squared plus 16 times 8. And then minus, we plug in 0 to everything. It's all going to equal 0. Now, what I'm going to do is multiply, or I'm going to distribute the 1 over 8 to every term because they all have 8 inside. So therefore, this 8 will cancel 1 8 out of each term that we see there. So that's going to simplify our calculations. So then this becomes 1 over 12. And instead of 8 to the third, it's now 8 squared. We have to take off an 8. And this is going to be 2 times 8 plus 16. And we're going to have a pi in front now. Negative 2 times 8 is 16 plus 16. And those two will cancel. So now we just have this term to deal with. 8 squared is 64. So we have 64 times the pi outside divided by 12. 64 pi over 12. We can reduce it. If we divide both numbers by 4, this is going to be 16 pi divided by 3. And so that is the answer. Now, if you want to get the decimal value for it, if you type in 16 pi divided by 3 in your calculator, you should get 16.755. That's the decimal value. So that's the volume of the solid.